The central question that we're interested in is how when you have a field of cells and there's a wound in the middle of that, how do the cells around know that they have a wound that they need to respond to and close that wound? Here what we're really talking about is, I like to think about it as these cells have like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of thing going on. And, but both really live within the cell at all times. And we would like to be able to control, is it Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde right now? Um, but we don't want to make it permanently into one or the other form because actually both of them are needed at different times. What we saw is that immediately upon ablation, within the first frame of ablation, calcium was present in cells very far away from the wound. It wasn't immediately clear how calcium could be spreading from the wound site to those cells many rows back. The next thing we saw was multiple stages of calcium dynamics in cells around the wound. So first you have a wound and calcium appears. About 45 seconds after wounding, we see a second calcium wave spread away from the wound. So here we have two waves spreading around one wound site. What we're learning is that wounds are very complex and there might just be multiple things happening. Wound healing is something we take for granted because for most of us, we get a wound and it heals, it works. It's a scratch or a mosquito bite, it goes away. But if we can get to a point where we can proactively help wound healing occur faster with certain therapeutics or pharmacological um, interventions, then we can really raise ourselves to a new level. It's a pleasure to, to be able to use the elegance and the mathematics of physics, but to apply it to a problem that has universal appeal, right? That we've all experienced and we all know is something we need to understand um, and has real world applications.